This is F-Secure Data Security Wrap-Up for the year 2010. My name is Mikko Hyppönen. Now, there's so much that happened over this year. We saw new mobile malware. Just at the end of the year, we saw all these attacks against WikiLeaks and attacks from the supporters of WikiLeaks and all that. But when we started filming this wrap-up, I decided I want to speak about one case only. And that one case is Stuxnet. Because I do believe Stuxnet is the most important malware of the year, maybe the most important malware of the decade. I do believe it will stay in history books as one of the game changers, as one of the viruses we will look back for years to come and see how it changed everything. Just like we look back at old viruses like the first email worm, or we look back at the first virus which tried to make money, or for the first macro virus. That's how important Stuxnet is. Well, here we have the first case of cyber sabotage that we've ever seen. And this is important because our technology, the machines around us, the factories, the power plants, they more and more rely on technology, computers and internet connections. And if internet doesn't work or if computers doesn't work, our society doesn't work. And there are differences between different countries on how reliant they are on automation and computers. But in the short term future, the situation will be that in most civilized countries, if computers fail, power grids fail, water networks fail, um, buses, trains, planes will not be moving anymore. Here's a great video which was broadcast by CNN a couple of years ago. It's an example of a SCADA attack, an attack against systems that control factories. What they're doing here in this test is that they're controlling a diesel engine. They are modifying the control systems of the engine and you can see what happens. The whole engine starts losing parts and will self-destruct. And it's, this attack was done with computers, no physical access at all. And of course that was just a demo. But what we found in July 2010 was not the demo. Stuxnet was found in July found originally by a antivirus company operating from Belarus, known as Virus Plogada, because they had found this new piece of malware, apparently from one of their customers in Iran, which they seem to have a lot of. And this one had a zero-day exploit. It exploited the uh, uh, link vulnerability, which was brand new at the time. So it was an interesting piece of malware. But then when antivirus companies started looking closer into Stuxnet, we quickly realized that there's much much more into Stuxnet than just the link zero-day vulnerability. In fact, Stuxnet, we believe, had been already going around a year earlier, in summer of 2009. We only found it in the summer of 2010. How can that be? Well, that is a very good question. And frankly, it is quite embarrassing that all the antivirus vendors missed it for a year. So how does it replicate? Well, first of all, it does not replicate over internet at all. It will not jump over network connections over the internet at all. It mostly replicates over perfectly normal USB sticks. And when you insert a USB stick infected with Stuxnet into any Windows computer, that computer will get infected. Well, actually not anymore because nowadays you would have an antivirus that would protect you or you would have patches which would close the zero day. But in July, you would get infected. Almost anybody would have been infected in July, regardless of how much safeguards you had in place. For example, even if you had disabled auto run and auto play for USB sticks, it didn't help. Even if you had disabled that you were not allowed to run applications from USB drives, that didn't help either. It didn't matter which version of Windows you were running. Every single version of Windows from Windows NT3 all the way to Windows Ser Server version 7 were capable of getting infected. It didn't matter if you were up to date or not. It didn't matter whether you were running an antivirus or not. It would infect your system. It would have infected my system in July. That's how serious it was. And it wasn't just using the link vulnerability. Overall, it used five different vulnerabilities, four of which were zero days. 
brand new vulnerabilities. And we've never before seen any malware which would have used more than one single vulnerability, zero-day vulnerability. Stuxnet used not one, not two, but four different zero days. And this is pretty remarkable by itself. And what it does once it infects your system is that it does pretty much nothing. It simply continues replicating on. Once it infects a machine, it will continue replicating over other USB sticks and in addition, within the local area network, it uses a printer spooler vulnerability to infect other machines. And it will be capable of doing this even if you are running under restricted user account, even if you're running, even if you're not the administrator, even if you're not uh, anybody with rights, even if you're a guest account holder, it uses a zero day to escalate privileges to be able to replicate further. But that's all it does, it replicates, it doesn't do anything else unless it finds your computer is connected to automation networks. Unless it finds that you're running Siemens Step 7 programming environment. This is the environment that is used worldwide in factories and power plants to program Siemens-based PLC devices, programmable logic devices. These boxes are the boxes that actually control the infrastructure around us. And these boxes well, they aren't reliant on Windows, but most, in most environments, Windows is used to program them. So if Stuxnet finds a computer with Siemens Step 7 programming environment installed, then it will check if that environment is connected with cables to one of these PLC boxes it's looking for. And it's looking for particular boxes. For example, for this box right here, this is uh, Siemens S7400. And when it finds that the right kind of a PLC device is connected, then it will infect that device. It will copy code over to that PLC device. And you will not be able to see these changes on the device. Even if you go looking, you won't see any of these changes. But even then, it doesn't do anything in practice. Nothing really still happens. Nothing happens until it finds that this PLC is controlling the right kind of an environment. Specifically, an environment which has a certain amount of high-frequency uh, power drives. It is specifically looking for power drives manufactured by two different manufacturers. Drives like these, manufactured by a company called Vakon, headquartered in Finland, and drives manufactured by a company called Fararo Paya. Here's their website. Fararo Paya is a drive manufactured, headquartered in Tehran in Iran. And when it finds these drives, then it will actually do what it tries to do. Then it will modify slowly and slightly the spinning speeds of these high-frequency drives. There is another mechanism in there as well, which most likely has to do uh, with controlling of some sort of power systems. But the high-frequency drive mechanism is very interesting. Especially when you think about what these high-frequency drives are typically used for. There are multiple different uses, but one in particular, and the reason why high-frequency drives are export controlled, is that they can be used in enrichment systems, in centrifuges. Specifically, for example, in uranium enrichment. Now, uranium enrichment is not easy. You keep doing it for weeks and months to be capable of enriching good enough uranium to be used as fuel in nuclear power plants, or you have to be doing it even longer if you want to build weapons-grade uranium capable of being used in atomic bombs. And if your centrifuges are running with these kind of drives and they are modified and their spinning speed is modified, what you most likely get is lousy uranium. Low-grade uranium which won't do what you want to do. And this is the reason why there's been these widespread speculations that Stuxnet was targeting the Iranian nuclear program. It would make sense, but we don't know if that's really the case. It would make sense because it would be capable of sabotaging the enrichment process without leaving traces on who actually did it. And it would be capable of reaching places that normal people would not be able to reach. What I am afraid is that we will get copycats. 
other groups, other nation states copying either the ideas in Stuxnet or possibly just modifying Stuxnet itself, which obviously is not trivial. It has taken hundreds of thousands of euros and man years or man decades in development. So obviously it isn't tri trivial to modify it, but it's obviously easier to modify it than to recreate Stuxnet from scratch. And it isn't actually hard to find a copy of Stuxnet. It is a worm. It spreads. You can just go around and ask for it. So that's why I believe Stuxnet is a game changer. And that's why I believe we will remember Stuxnet for years to come. Thank you very much.